Quinn. Frank, welcome. Thanks for meeting with me today. Thank you. Thanks so for much. having me, man. It's, it's fun to talk. Listen, I um, I want to say thank you for giving me an opportunity to read your book. I want to begin by just saying, longtime fan, saw you in '87. You guys wow. really meant a lot to me the whole time. Uh, Fifty years Crazy. old, uh, single dad with three boys myself. So, God bless um, you, man. I, I, I love it. I'm pro. You read the book. You understand. I, it means a lot to me even to hear that. And I'm not just trying to sell a book here. It's real. It's as it real is. as I can be with you, dude. Because you know how real it is because you're doing it, right? Yes. I mean, Absolutely. you know how it is. You know the other side. And for people that read this book, they're going to understand how it is to be on the other side of that child growing up. So your ch children, I have to say this first off because I applaud you. They have, a, they have a great dad who's bringing them up. I know it's, it always brings a lump to your throat. It brings a lump to my throat. Because it means everything later on. You don't know what you're doing for those kids right now. I'm telling you, and I love you for it. I don't even know you yet, but I love I love any dad that takes this step, dude, that takes that step. And I'm starting the interview like this because this is how passionate I am about this. Because when you're on the other side of that, and you're looking for something to grab onto as your kids you know, are. Look, they're young. You, you, you want something to... It's, you need a mold of how to live life. That's what yes. you're doing. You know, yeah. you're giving that mold, right? Yes. That I was looking for that mold. Who is my influence? Who can I be influenced by to show me the way how to live life and to get along in life? Let's be yes. honest. And my heroes came into play and I, I chose musicians. They're, it's great that they have a dad. You understand, man? It's so cool. So when I hear that, it means everything to me. And it, look, dude, I've been through mounds of therapy for this stuff and this is the conclusion i've come to maybe not may not be all right but it's my conclusion of it because i think it's that important for people to have something growing up to have something to look and say i want to do that and and when dad's there it's a big deal you know to guide you know parents parents man but not only dads but moms it's abandonment is terrible it's yes. just terrible and i don't I, you know for me, man, I, I just feel for anybody who's, who's who's dealt with it. There's a lot of people, from what I'm hearing, that are starting to get the gist of this book because everybody, you know, people thinking and uh, I, I understand they think it's a rock and roll book. Yes, there is, a, and you read it. It There's is elements part, to it. Yes, yeah. It's, it, we have that side of it, right? We yeah. have the great rock and roll stories in front of it, and in front of those stories. But it's a real thing about abandonment and how to get through life, right? And and how. I'm telling my story and how I did it. And if it could help anybody to click it in, to click that, you can do this too thing going yeah. that book sales, you know, I, I get it. Everybody's got to sell books. This is really about making people, helping people in life, which, you know, I think at this point in what we're going through, I think everybody needs to do right now. It's crazy. It's, you know, the moment for me was I read the book on a flight out to Arizona and I read the first half on the way there, the other half on the way back. Yeah. And, um, you know, the first couple of chapters, I mean, it was really rough beginning. It was rough for me to read too. It had effect on me, but I want to tell you, there's two elements to this book. I'll get in the second half in a minute, but sure. the contents of how you looked inward towards family repeatedly, it wasn't just the one time in the beginning, you know, with the, with your father leaving you at such a young age and yeah. then having to move to, you know, St. Tina's house and then, you know, moving forward, um, you repeated this. Yeah. process over and over again so much through life that uh it, it was amazing i'm just and uh, just i don't know how to explain it it's just uh, it was inspiring on what you were doing and how you really looked towards family that was the basis of every little thing that you did it really is and i'm, I'm so glad you got it and you said magic words saint tina because my my, my if people that haven't read the book my grandmother who i after my dad left i went to live with my grandmother so mm -hmm. everybody should know this and she was, uh, that her house was my oasis. Like I was getting, when I lived with my mom, the place that we lived in, it was like lower income. I was getting beat up, literally beat up every day. Yeah. Uh, and so I went to, I call it the oasis of my grandmother, Tina's house. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was the place of, um, I could take a breath and just be who I wanted to be. And I, I was lucky enough that my drummer, Charlie Benanti from Anthrax, <laughs> were, were related. Um, obviously. And uh, we grew up in the same, he lived in that house. So we, you know, he showed me the ropes of music. He was, he was always a great musician. He was a great drummer from four years old. So I, it really influenced me to want to get into that. And it made all the sense and all that's my path, whatever you want to call it, divine intervention, whatever you want to call it. 
It's just meant to be like that. It happened. And so when you say I went back to family, that house was so important to me, important to me because even we could have been on the biggest tours, the biggest tours in Anthrax's career. That house, I still went back to. Charlie and I, funny enough, we go on these used match tour, tour buses, planes, all that stuff, big stages around the world. Charlie and I were in the same car on the way home and still wind up in the same house. I, and I that, was, that. It's really important to me that people know how important any kind of family, it doesn't have to be like family, like your, your grandmother, your mother. It could be your, your, your really tight friends that are family. You understand? Because I have oh. friends that I call family. Sure. So I know that not everybody has that home base, but there is a home base in your life. And it's good to stick to that because that's what you always go back to. You know, we, uh, I, no pun intended, I call it my safe home. But that was, I knew I always had that. And I still, I mean, she's passed, God rest her soul, my grandmother now, but I still have that in my mind. So that's still my oasis. So just thinking about her. So yeah. I don't think you lose that. It's very important. Yeah. I, I come from a large Italian family myself. I had a grandmother. Cool. I had the, we were making the calamari upstairs. We we're making the cannolis downstairs. And then everybody came it. to the middle floor and then we had the big, big, you know, Christmas dinner. And then they loved making the Browns chicken on Sundays. You know what I mean? They had the chicken dinners, but uh, um, my oasis has gotten smaller with me and yeah. the boys. You know, I don't really, a lot of my aunts and uncles have passed on, you know, yeah. throughout life. And uh, I do whatever I can for my kids and give them as much as I can at that level. As much of course. as possible. Good for you, man. So how are you? And I'm interviewing you, you, you yeah. know, but I, I, I'm interested in this. I'm, inter I'm, I'm genuinely interested in that about great dads. You know, it's another, it's probably another book I want to do one day in my life because I, I believe in great dads of taking that and you took, I love that you took it and rolled with it. And you don't understand, you're going to have another inherited life and another, another family when these boys get older, right? Mm -hmm. When your kids get older, they're going to get girlfriends. They're going to have family, right? Oh, Think coming. about that. Dude, <laughs> lot, that's what I'm saying. How old are they now? Uh, 16, 15, and 10. All oh, boys. You're, I, dude, you're you're right there. I'm right you're, there at the cusp. Yes. You're at the cusp, right? Yeah. Which is awesome. It's a great time because, yeah, it's going to be hard to separate, but they're going to build that family. And guess where they're going to come back home to? Who's their oasis? That's something to look forward to in life. And, and that's why I tip my hat to you. And I'm not kissing up to you, dude. I'm, I genuinely feel this. You, 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 earn, you earn your stripes. You earn your stripes because you're going to be my, like, as my grandmother was, she was my oasis. You're going to be the, their oasis. They always come back to dad. And how great is that, man? Come I, on. I've, I've tried. I mean, we, after, after we separated in 14, they were my everything. And every now and then we'll go through these long periods, maybe like a 10 day period where they'll go to their moms. And I feel almost at a loss for like purpose. Okay. Like Watch. without them here, like, oh, what was that noise? Or I'll knock yeah. on the wall thinking they're in the other room and they're going to knock back. It's just that yeah. simple. Um, they have been my everything. And I focused all of my life on them Good you know you. and uh i try to uh, you know expose them to what i can about music that i enjoy from Dad. you know they they know about sure. anthrax they listen cool. they think this is fantastic you know um but again back to the book i mean uh it's one of the things i really wanted to bring up here this was sure. important to me was you talked about marketing failures in the book okay mm -hmm. uh being a photographer i've taken i took your picture in 2018 at the rave here in milwaukee oh. uh, i love taking your picture um, when I read this about marketing and I teach my other clients about photography, how important marketing seriously is at any yeah. level, yeah. uh, was there an album? And I know it's going to be straight off the cuff question. Was there an album out of those, that periods of records that you wish you would have done a little differently? And do you think it would have changed the tides of where you are yeah. right now? No, I don't think it would have changed the tides because it was on a roll up after we, we started it, uh, from the second record on when I got in the band, uh, not that not because of why I'm in. I was in the band, but <clears throat> I felt like we really worked hard from, yeah. you know, when I, um, from they started, I, I was the roadie. I was a tech on a uh, fistful of metal. Well, there wasn't a lot of scoring on that, but when I got in the band, it was, it was, it was tunnel vision, man. Uh, it just, we had to do this. It was a goal yeah. and we had to do this. So from spreading the disease among the living was the breakthrough. Everybody, you know, it really, it was a good time in, in everybody's life, but, uh, and then became touring record, touring, you know, that kind of thing, that yeah. touring record. And the one thing we always say collectively as a band, I think we all believe this because it was so much, it was so busy. I mean, we were never home. So it'd be so many tours. And every time we finished one tour, somebody asked us to do another tour. And it was all good to be wanted. 
but one, one thing we always we don't regret because it's it's still a good record. I, I just think some of those songs on Stady Euphoria, if we just had a little more time to bake them to to really sit. We, and I'm being really honest when I say this. We didn't have enough time to, as we do now. I mean, obviously, it's a different time. But we like to live songs. You play them in your stereo. You, you go in your car and you take rides and stuff like that. At that time, believe it or not, man, as we were in the studio and there was another tour booked already. As we were in the studio, I mean, there was a deadline. Yeah. And that baking period, I call it, where you just live with the songs and maybe you take out a verse or a piece of a verse or a piece of, you know, like in songs. Yeah. So again, I listen to that record. I still love it. I love the time that it was. It was still very successful. It went gold immediately. It was all good. Uh, it was a very great time in our lives. But you're asking me for, if there's one regret, I know that that record didn't have enough time to process and the anthrax process. And, yeah. but that, that's really it because it's been a, a Look, this, I've been very lucky. I'm very fortunate. I'm, I'm very blessed. And I thank God for it every day. Even to be able to do it at this age and at this stage in our career, to be able to talk to you about anthrax, right? And a book yeah. that I just wrote. I would never, dude, and just so you know, I would have never thought in my life to write a book, ever. But this thing has been, this abandonment thing has been on me and, yeah. and digging at me. And to be really honest with you, I meet so many people like you uh, dads, great dads. I thought it was important. I, and I still do. I think it's really important that to let people know when, when they get shut down and punched down in, in life and stuff like that, it, you brush yourself off. I mean, when you read the book, you know, there's been some trials and tribulations in my, my life. So you'll see that. And, um, I just want people to know you could brush yourself off, abandon whatever it is, whatever, even if you, your mom left your dad, it doesn't matter. You can brush yourself off and, I don't want to preach, but I, I just think people need some hope somewhere. And, and if there's one person that needs that, that little guide, yeah. you know, and, and if a book could do that, I'm all good. Well, know? I want to let you know that after I've been writing some small pieces with some of the videos that I record. And um, cool. after I read your book, this is the other half of what you did to, for me. You inspired me at a level of writing. Wow. Okay. Uh, where I actually, when I wrote my last piece, I incorporated the way you're a writer told the story and how you dictated it. And I like almost third person, but coming straight at you. And yeah. when, after I did the piece and I read it to my parents, after I got back from Arizona, I read it to them. My That's dad great. said, that was the best piece I've ever heard you write ever. And they were almost wow. years about it. So the inspiration about how your book, I want you to understand at an author level. Okay. Yeah. Not just at a bassist on stage, not yeah. just as another dad, but as an author, how you wrote it. So now you're talking about writing another book. Do you think it's that this would thought. be easier? You think it might it's be a little just, easier second time around? I think, you know, uh, obviously from the book, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty honest guy and it comes yeah. straight out. Whatever I say is, is the words you, the, the, the words you wrote, uh, you read are out of me. That's it. I mean, Joel is great with uh, my co-writer, Joel McIver. He's great with getting it out of me. He's really good. And he's like, he has the truth serum. Um, and I don't leave anything. Uh, everything's on the table in my life. You've read everything. It's very raw. In fact, you said you can't read some of those chapters. I literally can't read without crying the chapter about my brother, Anthony. Absolutely. I can't, I can't read it. It's, it's just too hard to, for me about just li relive. What happens is I think when you read it, you relive it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm reading the first couple of lines and, I'm, and I, I just see myself and I see tears on the page. I'm like, I, I got, I have to stop. I just need a break. And that's the way it works. I think that's important. I think that's important for people to understand uh, the depth of, of of pain you can go through and still rise out of that and yeah. still come out of that and and make your best life. Not that this term that's really popular now, your best life. The truth of the matter is, I want why not? We have this, we, from all this COVID stuff we just learned, we have this much time on the earth. That's the way I look at it, man. That's the way I see it now with all. I've had some friends die recently that from COVID and it's insane how fast it is. So why not help people that are hurting? Why not? I mean, there's, there's so much the others are, that's not cool. You know what? It is cool. How about yeah. humans? How about humans? How about people who are in a hole and helping them? If they could read a page from my book and say, you know what? If he did it, I could too. Yeah. That's, that's cake, man. That's it. That's it for me. What a quote you, you know, you said, make it better, make it right. Some of the things that you said that I've, 
watched you say, listened to yeah. what you said. And uh, it transfers in every, almost every section of that book from the deli to yeah. <laughs> going on to with Motorhead to yeah. the, the Iron Maiden fiasco of oh, what hotel rooms, you know, everything was made right. It, yeah. You know, including the pirate, <laughs> the pirate yeah. games you guys are playing with each other quite a lot. Oh, the, you know, fun, book. great rock and roll stories, but it was all, all towards one thing, right? It's yes. all towards this, this plateau where you, where you, you know, I want to get there. Whatever that is, I don't know, in anybody's life, in anybody's life, you know, it's a ride. This whole life thing, I, I get, after you get to a certain age, you see this. Yes. It's a ride, man. We all have kids, we have family, all that stuff. It's a ride. So enjoy the ride. That's what I say. And remember those now, especially the time we're living in, I, I try to enjoy. I wake up and say, I want to make this a better day because, man, I don't know about tomorrow. Do you know about tomorrow? I have no idea about tomorrow, Frank. That's what I, I've <laughs> I try that. to think I do. Yeah, I we try do. To think I do. You have to plan, yes. but we don't know. We plan, of course. And I, look, I hope I don't sound too preachy here, but I guess after an age, you just want to help people. For me, yeah. after a certain age, you hit. It's like, wait, I went through this. If there's a better way to go, if there's a better way to go, and you're taking that bad road or, or, or a road that's not going to help you, why not take this road that helped me? Yeah. You know, and I, I can cut. You can cut through the bullshit. How about how about cutting through the bullshit where you don't have to go into this negative vibe, and it can get to maybe to a better place in your life so you could be more productive productive in your life. That's the way I look at it now. It's like, well, why not help this dude? Look, look, dude, don't do that. Go this, go this route. That's the way to yeah. go, I'm telling you. And you could try it. If it doesn't work, then make your own way again. That's right. Why, why not try, though? I mean, for me, it's all about fucking, why not be a cool dude and fucking, yeah, dude, I didn't, I didn't do it that way. You can do it that way. But I'm just letting you know I did it this way and it worked for me. Maybe it could work for you. That's it. Aaron. To circle back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gene Simmons, I loved how you and your buddy would go out and you would run into Gene Simmons at these hotel rooms, random places. I got to give you guys props because I try to meet people when they're going from the tour bus into the venue, say hi, sign something. And we've all been there. But you guys yeah. were always in that one place at that one time. We uh, then you turn around and you have Gene Simmons do the forward on the boat. How Dude. special is that? That is just amazing. Well, I, I didn't expect this to happen. And number one, if you, re if you read the book, you'll see how die you, well people that know me know i'm a diehard kiss fan and uh we all are in our band and to have and i've known gene throughout the years we've toured with him and I, like you said throughout the book it tells these great stories people who haven't read the book yet i live in new york uh we used to live in the uh, i used to live in the bronx new york and it was about a half an hour bus ride down to manhattan where kiss used to live they used to live in manhattan in the 70s and it was a very important time so my friend tom who was great he had the inside word they were, they, were, they had this business, uh, this business what was their manager, a coin management in the city. We knew the office address. Yeah. What would happen was we'd put two and two together. They have to go for meetings, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Tommy had some kind of inside hookup in the management. I don't know where. I don't know where. But he would just call me occasionally one day during the week, every week, and just say, it's, it's on. I know they're coming in for me. <laughs> I just got the word. And it would just be like a thing. So, of course, we cut out of school immediately. Cut out of school and we waited, you know, it could be January, February in New York, waiting outside Manhattan. I think it was, was 57th Street and Madison Avenue. That's where I think that's where the address was. We wait out. So we take the Manhattan Express bus half an hour down, cut out school, take it down and literally wait until we saw. And this is the, these are the days that Kiss, the guys in Kiss, you didn't know what they look like because they yeah. wore makeup. And yeah. they, they always covered their faces. So nobody really knew what they looked like. So what we would look for is six foot and above guys with long hair and suits <laughs> coming in. And we knew that was, those were the guys. Yeah. So the first time, that's what we did. So after a while, we did this quite a lot. And they would eventually know us because we do this all the time. I mean, and they were just puzzled. Like Gene Simmons, I remember him saying, Frank, and he, they would know our names after a while because they would ask, what's your name? Yeah. I said, my name is Frank Bello with my really high pre-puberty voice. Um, and said, my name is Frank Bello. <laughs> so the next time Gene in his infinite wisdom was here, he would see us again. And he, and he just looked as he's signing my autograph, Frank Bello, what are you doing here today? And how did you find out? You know, how, how did you find out we were here? How do you know that we're here? I said, anyway, I, we, we took a lucky guess. You know, my, my, my boys, me and Tom, we were, we, were, we were just over the, over the moon talking to him. Paul, he goes, hi, hi guys. How you doing? You're always here, huh? You know, we were, just stuff like that. Uh, and, after a while, they got to know us as these diehard Kiss fans. Yeah. And 
funny enough, growing up and then knowing from the band Anthrax, Gene, and Gene remembers all of this. He's got a great memory. So I've had this relationship with Gene. And so Joel, my friend, my coat writer, actually asked Gene, because I was too embarrassed to ask him, to ask him. And Joel asked me, he was more, he said, of course I'd do it for Frank. You know, it was, it was so great. And when you read the forward by Gene Simmons, it goes deep and you'll, you'll agree with me here. No. I've never really heard Gene talk like that about his dad and no. his, his upbringing and stuff. I've never read that before. So when I read it, it really touched me that I didn't know he went through that. You know, I didn't know. I knew he was very close to his mom. God rest her soul. Um, and, it, you know, he's, he was really attached to the idea, idea we're talking about here. So I, I thought that was really, really cool what you could do. I'm very, I'm very proud as a Die Hard Kiss fan. It's a really, it's a really big deal for me. I, I enjoyed the stories, the stories you told throughout the book, the, the Kurt Hamlet story, the broken window. Uh, <laughs> that was, uh, I mean, that was part of Anthrax that I didn't know. I mean, I grew up with the Hawaiian shorts. I was wearing the patch on the back with the Kiss Army on the denim jacket, you know? And then at some point, Anthrax started, you know, really, you know, partying with Dimebag Daryl. You were Woo! up all night, you know, up yeah, at the it, upper bar at the hotel, living the rock star life. It was something that I, I didn't really witness till later, you know, until after I picked up another record and I saw, wow, yeah. you know, Anthrax. we didn't really drink, drink until we met Dime, rest his soul, met another brother of ours, obviously, uh, and he showed us how to, he showed me how to drink. I'll tell you that much. I, I didn't know, I didn't know what the hell black tooth was. You know, I, I know what a black tooth is now. <laughs> my liver knows well, but um, it was a great time. So that's, what's great. And I, I'm very proud of this book because there were all those great rock and roll stories that nobody's heard. Yeah. Nobody's heard those stories and, and, and they're from, because I've held them here. And what's great about my co-writer, Joel, he'll pick that out because he'll remember, I told him something about it or mm -hmm. a smidget of it. And the way he lights the fire under my ass, uh, he'll just open my mind up and he'll say one line and all of a sudden this memory will just come out and it's like, oh yeah, and then this happened and it just it was like, a, it was like a run on thing. And for me to relive these stories yeah. and, and bring them to people because they were really good, fun rock and roll stories. All, nothing, nobody got hurt. It was all, it was all good times. Um, I'm just glad I could share them with people that, that really have never heard these stories before that were from my perspective in the anthrax life and in our, our times with Dimebag, Metallica, Kiss, yeah. all the all the great stories, Iron Maiden, you know, still talking about Steve Harris from the, the first time I met him to still being the, the same great friend that he is now to me. Uh, and he's a gentleman, the, the same hero that he was back then. He still Absolutely. is the same hero to me. He's, yeah. he's that guy. He's still a hero to me. And he knows that. And um, I just want people to understand how, you know, where I came from. And I, when they read it, they'll understand it. I remember at the, at the show at the rave here in Milwaukee, right before you guys came on, number of the bees came on and the crowd was singing to that. Right. Before, and I don't know if you guys let it play. I don't know if Dude. you were backstage going, let this song go for a minute. I know you're eating my hour, but go ahead. You know, here's, and, a, here's a trick to that. Uh, number of the bees. Number one is the tribute. Obviously it gets you pumped. That's a great song. Number one, it gets me pumped. You know, for me, that's a great warm up, believe it or not. Like, while I'm a number of the beasts is on before Anthrax goes on, I'm back on the side of the stage playing that song. Playing because I'm, I'm doing it, especially the, do, 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 all that stuff that Steve is doing right there, reliving my youth again yeah. as a tribute to tip off. But it's also a great warm up for my fingers because, you know, you know it verbatim. It's not that. It's, and it gets you fucking pumped. And for me, Absolutely. it's like, fuck yeah. Um, Iron Maiden still plays UFO. UFO before they go on. Yeah. So they play the band UFO Doctor Doctor. Yeah. And I asked Eve that. He goes, he gets him pumped. He gets him pumped. Gotta give credit to the sound guys. The sound guys know what they're playing at the soundboard. You gotta yeah, give so, them. <laughs> yeah, it's a totally. Credit. But that's that's set up because uh, Number of the Beast. We ask for that right before we go on. Yeah. That's so when you hear Number of the Beast, you know Anthrax are going to come on. Oh, soon. they were. It was packed house. It was a packed house. Yeah. Rave. You guys rocked that place. Yeah, I, I love I think that I got. Place. I love think it. I got kicked in the head like at least three times in the photo pit. You know, I enjoyed. <laughs> That's how you know it's a show. It, it was a great show. You know what I mean? I, I think I, I was able to walk the room once, I think, completely before I was just like, you're not going back in there. You can't get into the front anymore. <laughs> I had crazy. a great time. If right. I were to compare it back to 87, when I saw you guys for the first time for the Mona Living, you guys came in with Exodus and Celtic Frost. Wow, that's yeah. that's what began. That was my first show, Frank. Wow, that was dude. that was I was wow. outside the Aragon in Chicago. It was snowing. It was fall, yeah. and that was my first. I had no idea what to expect from you, but that's then great. 
to follow up, I did go and see you again on the State of Euphoria tour when you opened up for Ozzy. Yeah, awesome. At Love the that. Rosemont Horizon, Chicago. Oh, yeah. I, I lost my voice for a month because you guys, I just want you to know that. I <laughs> sang with Thanks. Joey and, and just from afar. Yeah. Boy, this, this, was, this was it for me. Yeah. So for your outlet that you had created with Scott and the energy and everybody else, that has now fed into me, not just with the book, not just with music, but as a whole. That's great. So, and, I, you know, hope you and you know, it all goes in one. Think about it. Yeah. And as it does for me with music, it does for you. I bring that into my life. You're bringing that into your life, right? It gets you, gets you an extra kick in your step, right? To carry on and to have that outlet because we all need it. Look, you're a dad with three kids right now, which is awesome. You need an outlet, dude, as we all do. So this music thing that we got lucky enough to, to jump on when we were younger, this, this heavy metal thing, and I call it like this community thing. I feel very fortunate to be part of this because really no other music has gotten like, like this community kind of vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. We all stick together. We all have our uniforms, you know, with the way we dress and all that, the way we look. And all. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And, and looking back in retrospect, after all this time, what a great ride this was. And, and it still is. And still is. I have to say that because it's important to carry on because I want people to, to feel this in future you know, generations. I think it's important to carry this music on. I want newer bands to carry that torch. It's so important that this outlet of metal is is out there for people to know. All right, we have this community thing going on. Let's let's check this out. And with this new band, you can still be into the other bands that are, that are older. That's fine. But to carry that torch to the next generation, so everybody could feel like you and I feel. Yeah. I think it's so important because this is our outlet, man. And we had this. You know, when when the radiator is running high, you want to sh let it out, let it out, right? And that's what yeah. this music does to us. Well, thank you so much for writing this book. I hope you write a second one. It would be nice to see if you get enough, get enough to, you know, just know that people you are inspiring people with this other piece. It's so important to me. Thank you, dude. Thank from you for doing, saying From that. being a bassist, from being an actor to now an author, you know, I'm yeah. proud of you. You really are, you know, thank you. special to a lot of people more than you can it imagine. It means a lot to me for you to... For you to say that, thank you. I appreciate it. And number two, it's, um, look, if, again, like if I could say one, it's not about book sales. Everybody wants to sell books. I get it. But at the end of the day, if it can get somebody from one day to the next, and people are, and not a, some of the people are reading the book, it's not out yet. It, it comes October 12th. October 12th oh, yeah. is a release date. But uh, the press people that have, have that have read the book are getting what you said out of it. And I appreciate that. And hopefully it carries on to that. And, um, and look, again, these things, it's it, this is my my story, uh, and if you could you could take my story and help your life with it, we're all good. That's and the, it. And in the end, becomes our stories, Frank. Just like and, this moment. Ah, well said. That's exactly what it is. And in the end, it becomes our story. And in the end, and, it does. And your life is better for everybody because life is this short, man. It so is. We have feel about it, you know. Thanks again for meeting with me today, Frank. I hope Dude, you have a great afternoon. I, thanks you know, for having me. Great words. I wish you the best of luck with your family. I Obviously, you're a great person. Great Thank dad. You, That's not a kiss up. That is not a kiss up because I appreciate a good dad when I see them. That's Thanks, the bottom Frank. line. I appreciate it. That's the truth. And keep up the good work, bro. You as well. Be safe. Will, be well. Talk soon. Take care of yourself. Be well. Bye. Bye-bye. How do you shut this thing off?